Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and so many of you have been horny for this tutorial that I figured I would just make the video. Uh, we have a basic tap to change here with the face deformation. I use Blender to create these horns. We also have a screen tap and hold that makes them shrink down, and when you let go of the screen tap, they bounce back up into place. It's the same with these ones as well, so you can reduce it, quickly tap, and then they'll change to this other style while they're growing back. It's pretty sweet, pretty simple. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing we need are Spark AR's face reference assets. You can find them at the link in my description, and once you're on this page, hit the big pink button that says download, and it will download all of these files for you. It includes the feminine and masculine mesh masks that you might have already seen in previous videos, like the face tattoos and things like that, but we're gonna be using this facemesh.obj file, which I'm going to import into Blender, so you might also wanna click that link if you haven't already got Blender, download the most recent version, and once you have both of those things, open up Blender, create a new project, and we'll get straight into it. Okay, so we have Blender open here. You just wanna create a general project, and then hit X on your keyboard and delete to get rid of that default cube. Then you wanna hit File, Import, and Wavefront.obj, because that's the format we're using. Go to wherever it is that you have it saved, Face Assets, Mesh, and then the FaceMesh.obj here. Import that, and it will appear kind of small, but you can zoom in and see the whole thing right there. Now we're gonna switch over from layout mode to sculpting. You might have to deselect, go back to layout, sculpting again, reselect, just play around with it until you end up with this drop down menu down the side in your sculpting tab. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you can pull that up manually. Maybe you can do it with this. Yeah, you can actually. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Who would have guessed? I just learned something while I'm trying to teach something, which is awesome. So hit Y and you'll go to the front view here. It looks creepy as hell. Now all of these down the side here are brushes and you can use them to do different things. So for example, this one here, smooth will smooth out parts of the mesh. You can get rid of the eyes if you want and turn that into an effect, I suppose. Uh, Control Z to undo that. What I'm gonna be using though is this snake hook here. And I'm just gently gonna pull out different parts of the mesh until I have a kind of nice style horn that I'm happy with. You can play around with it. We use this elastic deform here to pull certain parts of it out, make it thicker or thinner. And you just wanna make sure that you're pulling it away from the face mesh and not pushing it in. Go back to our front view here. You can add additional spikes if you want. You can pull out the sides and change the, the shape of the stuff. Just play around until you're happy with the result. We'll do a grab here. I can pull out a couple more mini spikes, uh, maybe a couple down here. I don't know, we'll have a little bit of a weird crown effect going on. Uh, and once you're happy with the result, what you wanna do is either save the file so you can refer back to it later, or just hit file, export, and export it as a wavefront.obj again. I'm gonna save it to the desktop here. I'm gonna save it as hornycrown.obj.obj, and we'll just export that. Now I can control hide that, and what you'll see here on my desktop is the obj file for hornycrown which is our actual model, and the .mtl file here, which is just for all of our materials. So now we can create a new Spark AR project, and I'll show you how we can import this and play around with it a little bit. Okay, so here we are, new project. Switch over to the 2D view, show the patch editor, give yourself a little bit of space, and then you wanna drag in the obj file, just that one, not this mtl one here, inside of your assets panel. Once we have that, you can drop it down, and you'll see it has the actual object here, the 3D object, which is a mesh, and then it also has this OBJ material here. So we can use both of those in a second. Right click here in the scene and add a face mesh. That will appear nested inside of a face tracker. Now usually you would add a material at this point, but instead we're gonna click this plus button down here for deformation and we're gonna add our horny crown. And as you can see, the effect is instant. You can already see it working. Now at this point, you may wanna go back into Blender and make some adjustments. Maybe it's not as pronounced as you like, uh, or there are certain details you wanna change. So let's do that real quick and I'll show you how we can make adjustments. So here we are back in our project. If we switch back over to the sculpting view with the sculpt mode brushes, then we can take something like the snake hook here and make these more pronounced. We can pull these out. You just wanna make things maybe a little bit sharper. And we do the same with this deform. So we're gonna pull those very slightly in, not too far. And then have this kind of rotated around and down. Just something like that maybe. I'm not sure, we'll pull those in so that they're very thin spikes, not as hyper pronounced around the corners. Yeah, kind of more like Bart Simpson here. So now we're just gonna file, export, wavefront, and replace the object that we've already created. So now if we hide Blender, we can import this for a second time and we can delete this original one because we don't need it anymore. Now if we come back up here to our face mesh, we can add a deformation once again, the new horny crown that we've created and you'll see it's a little bit more pronounced, slight changes, bit more Star Trek than it was before. You can increase the percentage or decrease it here. So you can go from 0% to 100%, which is pretty sweet. 
or you can just leave it as it is. Now we're going to create some interactions here. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do is duplicate the face mesh that we have. So we'll rename the first one horns and we'll rename the second one horny just to distinguish the two of them. And so now I'm going to add in a few more meshes that I've created in Blender already. The ones you saw from the start of the video. This is kind of like that moment in Art Attack where they say, and here's one I made earlier. OK, so here we have my horny and my horns. Uh, I'm actually going to delete the one we just made in the video here. And what I'm going to do now is just add in the two deformations that I've created, one for horns, which gives you this kind of thick spiky look that I went for, and this one here with horny, which is the same thing, but a little bit thinner. Now, if I make this invisible, then you'll see it. I have two versions here, but we kind of want some interaction. So I'm going to create a screen tap and I'm going to drag out from here and we're going to create a knot patch with a little switch connected to it. And now I'm going to control select both of these meshes hit the visibility to create patches for them both. Now we have horns and horny, and I'm going to connect from the screen tap directly to horns. And I'm actually just going to delete that and connect that up here and connect that up here. So now we have a screen tap going through a switch. The switch goes to our horns, which is now no longer visible. And then it also connects through this knot patch, which reverses the Boolean signal of our screen tap to the horny mesh that we have. So now if I simulate touch and tap on the screen, it will alternate between the two variations that I've created. Pretty sweet, huh? And at any point, you can drag in a new one. So here's the original one that we had before, horny crown, and you can just replace the deformation. So here's the horns one. We'll replace that with horny crown, and it goes back to this kind of Star Trek Bart Simpson looking thing. Now, if I tap, it still alternates between the two, but personally, I prefer this and this. So play around in Blender, play around in Spark, Kind of figure out what looks best for you. You might also want to test it on the FaceTime camera just to get a sense of what it looks like with maybe hair in front because I do have quite a lot of hair. So tap it and you'll see the distortion is there. Kind of works around the hair pretty well, uh, especially this one here. I kind of like. So now we're going to add a little bit more interaction. Uh, I'm going to move this up here a little bit and we're going to drag and we're going to double tap and add a screen tap and hold patch. So from here, the face mesh that we can increase and decrease we can go up and we can go down. I'm going to create a patch out of that. And I'm going to do the same thing for this one here. So now we have a face mesh and a face mesh for our horns and our horny. And now I'm going to add an animation, which is connected up to a pulse. So we have a screen tap and hold here connected to a pulse, which is connected to an animation. Now from progress, I'm going to add a transition, which always appears miles away from where it's supposed to be. So we'll move that here, change it from a vector three to a number because we only want it to move in a range between zero and one, or in this case, 0% and 100%. And now connect the weight and the weight of these two. And you see here that they're completely gone now until you hold down on the screen, but they're pretty much stuck there and you can't alternate between them anymore, uh, which is kind of awkward. So now if we hit refresh, we can actually alternate between them. So we can screen tap and hold and it will grow out the horns and then we tap and it will alternate between them. So sometimes there's a little bit of a bug, but it figures itself out if you play around with it. So now what I'm going to do is change the start value from zero to one and the end value from one to zero. So now it will go from 100% to 0%. So by default, the horns are fully grown out on your head. You can tap to change between the two styles or as many styles as you like. And then when you tap and hold, it shrinks them all the way down. Now they won't come back. So now what we need to do is connect this turned off output here to the reverse input of our animation patch. And now if we hit refresh one more time, the horns are fully grown. We can tap to change between them. And when we screen tap and hold, they'll shrink down. When we let go of the screen, they'll grow back. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This is a very simple effect. There's not much going on. You do have to use Blender and these face reference assets, but other than that, it's relatively simple. You can add as many variations as you like. They don't have to be specifically horns either. So you can make the cheeks bigger or the nose bigger, or you can add spikes all over the face, anything you like really. And if you want, you can even add a material to the face mesh. So by default, it has this face warp material, which just warps the actual skin texture. But if we create a new material, it turns it into this uh, regular face mesh. So you can add colors to that. You can add a texture to it you can pretty much do anything you like. And with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. I try to make as many videos as possible, as regularly as possible. It's not always possible, but I do what I can. Yeah, thank you for watching and stay horny. Peace. Hello, did you know I have a Gumroad page where I'm selling a bunch of filters? If not, check it out. Link's in the description. I also have a Patreon where you can get them at a discounted rate and support the channel. Thank you.